very, very excited to have Soren, concept director from Lego with us today. Soren, how do you make sure that the, you know, like the, the, the areas that you're working in, like the, the territories that you're going after at Lego, how do you make sure that they, I guess I'm speaking to company opportunity fit here, right? How do you make mm-hmm. sure that they align with your core competencies? Like, is there a specific yeah. criteria or like a process that you've got in place? Like, how do you, how do you set your strategy at Lego in terms of those opportunity areas? And how do you evaluate that, that fit? You know, so, so basically just want to start somewhere we're saying in it, it's all about innovation culture and our mission in Lego is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. And that has a huge impact in, you would say, the long-term investment goals that we're bringing. So, so you can say from a, to your question, we have these overarching innovation goals, innovate play, innovate the ecosystem around us, digital transformation, positive impact to the world. No surprises there. But the point being that we as a company, in having these agendas, they steer everything we do, and they actually also steer the operation method. And I think it's important to understand that with our culture, our talent is is actually structured in what we call leadership playground. And the reason for me mentioning it is this, that innovation and bringing this out to the market is for everyone in the company to do. So we live under these three very simple, uh, you know, rules or values from the company. Be brave on behalf of the business. Be, you know, be out there. Be inquisitive. Be focused on what you do. And last but not least, be curious about the world and everything happening within it. So so these values all together actually forms the way we distribute innovation. So as I mentioned before, it's actually been explaining quite simple. We've got when we got existing play and existing business, it's the core innovation. That's where we drive demand. This is, you know, I always use it as a sausage factory <laughs> analogy because you kind of, you know, it's reducing risk, it's incremental innovation, it's based on time and what you do. But on the other hand, what we see is as soon as we move into new business, new play, that's when we need the front end innovation. And it's best depicted by just the hot dog stand. We're trying things out. You mentioned it, piloting, being constantly on the needs of people. So basically, you can say, if you look at it this way, then this, the core processes very much, you know, low waste. We're just innovating for where we are going. But when it comes to front innovation, that's really where we need the pioneering and creating the future of play via radical uh, experience innovation. So to, you could say, The first question here is really about the organizational strength, focusing on what it's good at using the methods uh, that you also described in being agile, in being inquisitive in jobs to be done when we're uncovering new needs, but also be extremely firm when you are uh, driving the the, the core business, uh, when you know what you're doing. And and that's where that has worked until now, but let me... uh, I think I'll come back later a, a little bit on where, where's the future then heading. How do you make sure that, you know, when you're developing you know, new propositions within those spaces, how do you make sure that they're like meeting those unmet and underserved needs that we talked about earlier at, at like a big enough scale? Right? I mean, Lego is a is like huge scale business. Like, are, are there any specific strategies, like different feedback mechanisms that you're using to, like collect insight and iterate your way to product market fit. Like, well, what does what does what does product market fit finding look like at Lego? Mm. Uh, and a uh, very good question. I think I think I I again here I I came prepared I a little bit on on how we operate. But I think what's essential back to also my intro is that we think and act audience first across everything we do. This is, of course, happening also in the sausage factory, but more so, of course, when we are uncovering new needs. So this this belief of audience first has a huge impact on how we operate. And it's the good old double diamond model that we're really operating in, that you could say the way to, to solve what you're mentioning here is to identify and prioritize the risk assumption. So, so the point being 
even though for some people it might seem a little bit overwhelming that again, oh, let's get to the finish line as soon as possible. It is really a culture around designing for user experiments to prove or pivot. You know, minimal viable product, it has many good names, but the point being that in order to operate this, you need to think in the double diamond. Sometimes you need to invest a lot in the beginning of the diamond horizon scanning the jobs to be done. Sometimes you have them and you're able to do it. But then moving that before you've actually proven something here with minimum cost before going in and you know carving in steel basically when you want to go. So to the point here being that and alongside this process, what we have set in motion is, of course, a whole array of user experiments from quantification, quality, you name it. We've got all sorts of tools uh, to, to bring that in uh, before going into radical infield. So really, uh, you know, little panels, little things where we just prove or pivot our hypothesis along the way. What is so interesting is that that, that's proven and known methods and everything, uh, you know, in normal uh, companies and so on. But what we've also seen in, in, in you know, in, in our, uh, you would say, entrepreneurship or whatever we call it, that how we can use the same ethnographic methods of questions, being curious, being brave, actually with the stakeholders. So internal and external stakeholder design, lack of a better term, but really using business unit markets and specialists and agencies to co-build this message. So what we've actually done in front end innovation is to align both consumer integration, but certainly also all our experts within and within the vicinity of the company to build these cases along the way. Because at the end of the day, everything about innovation here in this end is about de-risking. So to actually we make this simple model that kind of said, yes, there is a lot of risk in the beginning, but it's okay. That's, that's where you need to have the uncertainty and risk as long as your investment levels doesn't reflect it. So, so this simple model you can see is actually how our management steer our innovation portfolio. We have loads of things cooking in the beginning and maybe even just things coming in from the right. And there's low investments level in them. But as, to, but as soon as you, you start getting closer and closer, we also increase investment and thereby also de-risk. So the end it's, it's very simple and then yes, very complex, but it's really that buildup that has really made our long-term investment valuable uh, because we rarely go to market with something that doesn't fit at all. It has happened. What, what's the kind of scale of concept testing and user research that's going on before market pilots in order to demonstrate yeah. that product market fit and I, I think actually it, it depends a lot on what we're doing but but you could say we we do already already in the first part of the double diamond go out and do something so, so we've set processes in motion where you can do you know uh, fake door you know online fake doors like would you be interested in a new service that blah 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 just to get some steer and I think what what's really interesting it's not only about finding evidence and de-risking, it's about listening to consumers also brings you some huge aha moments in that phase of already uh, you know, asking commercial questions early on. Like, you know, don't be afraid of going out and, and MVPing and trying very early. The worst thing that can happen is that you learn something. So I think that would be my major cry out here for everyone listening. Like experiment, apply an experiment, experimental culture in innovation. Try things out as soon as you can and go out and learn from it because it's both risky, de-risking, but it's certainly also improving your innovation. Can you talk to us about like some good examples of like products, services that you've been working on at Lego that really demonstrate like problem solution fit uh, 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 and like speak to what the kind of problem and, and kind of better solution looks like yeah so uh, thanks you know i, I think again it, it's a, of course a little bit difficult with a lot of things being secret and so on, but i have i have a few examples of how we operate one is the organization part of what this means 
And then secondly, some examples of what we've actually built in, in thinking like this. Because as I mentioned before, so just starting there, in, in our field of operation, there is this you know division that we had uh, up until now. But what we've seen lately is actually that the world, and I think you alluded to it as well, the world is changing so fast. Change is constant, and the risk of losing ground is so quick. So we have learned that that that, that not only in the the core innovation and the fund innovation, you need to think ahead. So so as an example of successes, and I'll show you concretely what we did using this method. So please try it out and and tell me what you want. But that's basically my job now is to enable everyone everywhere to innovate from within. That's how we've set it up. And the reason for me telling you this is actually how efficient and how little waste you can create if we go in as internal consultant, helping teams to find their jobs to be done, the their process. Not everyone can do the same thing and they only need it ever so often. So we actually go in as innovation consultants and build that bridge between them because it's really all about future-proofing the brands that's so essential for long-term success. So what this means in all simplicity is actually that any good example that I'll come to will need to be rooted in what we call the 3C innovation thinking. This simple model is how we help franchises within Lego being that Lego City or whatever, to to start on the right foot. So, so I think my point to your to your question here, the best example I can give is where you have started on the right grounds before you race. So this you know toolbox here is about curating the knowledge and insights you have around what we call the three C's: consumer, commercial, and especially cultural insights. We are forgetting in innovation. We can know what consumers say, we can know what commercial goals we have, but the cultural changes around us, how what that uh, changes. So basically, example number one, what we identified in preschool is that the consumer, so the parents, they really want these four jobs to be done uh, for their kids. When we started looking at this and the portfolio we had, it was extremely clear that we were out of sync with where the parents want us to be. So that's a very consumer but it's also very here and now. So again, in order to make that fit, both in commercial and cultural perspective, we have another example here where using this mythology, understanding, I know I don't have time to go through all the details of it, but, but in principle, just this thinking, if you can apply that, what do we know about the consumer? What are the jobs to be done? What commercial impact are we trying to change? But certainly, and we've seen this again and again, what are the cultural shifts happening out there that we should take uh, notice of? So a good example here is that friends, little friends, our girls line, and we, you know, we, we were allowed to say that in the beginning, it's a girls line, not anymore. Again, cultural shifts. But what was so interesting is that it's only 10 years old and it still looks dated, if you see here on, on, the, uh, on the left side. So what we did here was to apply, collect, and go out and research both the consumer, the commercial, and the cultural impact of the world in change, where empowerment of girls, in, you know, uh, you know uh, D&I, all the things actually made us into a complete repositioning of the Friends Band a brand towards a a, a friendship, a, uh, you know, a portfolio and so on. So, on. so, so I think that was that was just the the basis of it. I hope it gave you a little bit of p- picture on on how you can see we are steered completely by audience first, but also how it's actually efficient because you de-risk, you invest in the right points in time, and more so here with with the innovation everywhere example, at the end, you risk not innovating for the right uh, reasons, for the right society, not only for the right job to be done. That, I think, is the huge, uh, one of the uh, largest changes in, in, uh, in our line of the business, and I'm sure in, in most of yours as well.